In this video, we're going to solve a problem which appeared in J Advanced 2016. Now, in this problem, uh, we need to find out the value of this summation where the index variable k is goes from 1 to 30. And it's a, uh, it's the expression is in a trigonometric form. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to solve this particular problem in the solution section. Let's go ahead. So now in this to solve this particular problem, first we consider the given expression as P. And we, if we consider that P, right, we can see that, right, here we have in the denominator two sine function, sine pi by 4 plus k minus 1 pi by 6 and the similarly when uh, that is pi by 4 and k pi by 6. So here we observe that, right, uh, that to solve this particular problem or to understand the problem, right, we have to play with, right, the sine in bracketed thing, right, so the argument if we call it, right, so uh, to so the, and the argument of sine function is depends on the index variable k. So that's why for simplicity, right, Right? so that we can uh, write or we can do the problem very easily right we can apply all the formulas of trigonometric identities and all that stuff we assume that right the angle a is equal to the pi by 4 plus k pi by 6 and obviously the angle b as pi by 4 plus k minus 1 pi by 6 so these two terms we just consider now if we do so so therefore our p is equal to 1 by sine b into sine that's it now here we have to make some a important observation which is the only the tricks to solve this advanced problem which is in 2016 okay so let's go ahead and see what is the trick okay so now here we observe that if we subtract a minus b then it we found out that it is equal to pi by 6 why? You see that pi by 4 and pi by 4 get cancelled out and uh, k pi by 6 and k pi by 6 will cancelled out. So therefore the resultant will be pi by 6. So this is the only observation which is required uh, in this problem. Let's go ahead. So therefore we can see that we can consider that p uh, equal to we just multiply the numerator by sine pi by 6 and the denominator by sine pi by 6. So these two terms we just added uh, here, right? You can easily observe that, right? So here we are added that sine pi by 6 and cos uh, pi by 6 here. Now obviously you will notice that these two terms, right? Sine pi by 6 and sine a minus b is actually equal, right? Because here we can observe that a minus b is equal to pi by 6. So therefore that sine of a minus b must be equal to sine of pi by 6. That's a very obvious statement. So if we consider that, therefore, we can understand that we can rewrite this function in this particular form or the summation in this particular form. So now our most of the job is done. So here we go ahead and rewrite this by expanding sine a minus b. What is sine a minus b formula? That is sine a cos b and minus cos a sine b, which we all know that. Now we divide that denominator and the numerator. If we do so, we can say that sine A, sine A cancel for the first term, cos B and sine B will be cot B and cos A uh, and uh, sine A will be cot A and sine B, sine B get cancelled and sine pi by 6 is a well-known value of half. So therefore, by simplification, we get it as 2 summation of cot B minus cot A. And we already considered that what is B and what is A. So therefore, my expression will be simplified as summation k equal to 1 to 13 multiplied by 2, right? Cot of the B values and minus cot of the A values, right? That's it. So this is the first step to obtain the value of the given expression or the given problem. Hope you understood it. Now we'll go ahead and try to simplify or try to add all those values from k equal to 1 to 13. So let's go ahead and see how we proceed further. Okay, 
So now we are we as we said we are uh, done our first step. Now in our second step we need to sum up all those elements, right? All the terms, right? So here, right? We consider again the sum p as summation of uh, k equal to one to thirteen. Two times of that is equal to alpha k. Like just assume that. What is alpha k? Alpha is k is the terms uh, in the summation. Okay, that is cot of pi by four of first term and the cot of the second term. That's it. Now we need to add alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha twelve, alpha thirteen, and so on and so forth. So now to do so, first we substitute k equal to one. So if we substitute k equal to one, we get alpha one. If we substitute alpha equal to two, we get uh, alpha two. And similarly, right, we get alpha three and so on. We uh, write down the terms, last two terms, that is alpha twelve and alpha thirteen. Now we need to find out alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and alpha thirteen as a summation. So that's why we add them all. So if we try to add them all, right? So therefore, in the left hand side, we already get the summation. And now we need to sum up the right hand side of all the ex all the expression. So that's our job now. Now uh, here we notice that if we add all the right hand side expression, right? So therefore, right? Obviously, the first term that cot pi by four and zero pi by six, uh, it will be remain as it is. But we can see that the second term of alpha one and first term of alpha two are same. So therefore, they cancelled out, and in the similar process, all the terms will be cancelled out. Okay. Now here we have to concentrate on this term, right? That cot pi by four by three pi by six. Now this particular term will be cancelled out by the first term of alpha four. Okay, and the first term of alpha to the power twelve will be cancelled out by the last term of alpha eleven. If you uh, do uh, if for better understanding, you can write down all the terms from alpha one to alpha thirteen. Okay, so if we do so, right? Obviously, you will able to get all the summation. Okay, okay. So now the alpha summation of uh, k equal to one to thirteen alpha k will be definitely equal to the first term. That that means that it will gives you that uh, cot pi by four plus zero pi by six. That means cot pi by four minus. Cot pi by four plus thirteen pi by six. So therefore, the summation will become very easiest form. So therefore, we can say that that p is equal to two cot pi by four minus cot pi by four plus thirteen pi by six, and that's it. So therefore, our job is to now evaluate the those values cot pi by four and cot pi by four plus thirteen pi by six. And then how uh, we can easily find out that which option is correct. So now let's proceed. So now we already seen that, right? Our expression will be simplified as now two cot pi by four minus cot twenty nine pi by twelve. We just add pi by four plus thirteen pi by six. Now cot pi by four is well known. That is one, and cot twenty nine pi by twelve can be written as cot. 2 pi plus 5 pi by 12, and we know that for any angle, any trigonometric function is a periodic function with 2 pi. What that means? That means that cot 2 pi plus something is equal to cot of that particular angle. So therefore, we can say that it is equal to 2 1 minus cot 5 pi by 12. So therefore, our next job is to calculate cot 5 pi by 12. Calculate that cot 5 pi by 12. We first consider to calculate tan 5 pi by 12 because it is all the formulas and everything we know. So therefore, we can see that to calculate the tan pi 5 pi by 12, we need to uh, believe on or we need to expand that 5 pi by 5 pi by 12 in a well-known angle. Now we can notice that it can be written as as Pi by four plus pi by six, and tan pi by four and tan pi by six are a well-known formula. So therefore, we just expand or use the formula of tan a plus b. What is tan a plus b? That gives us tan a plus tan b divided by one minus tan a tan b. So therefore, we can say that it can be written as as tan pi by four plus tan pi by six and one minus tan pi by four into tan pi by six. We know the value of tan pi by 
port is 1 and tan pi by 6 is equal to 1 by root 3. So therefore, if we substitute and multiply both denominator and numerator by root 3, which will be reduced to as root 3 plus 1 and root 3 minus 1. So we obtain the value of tan 5 pi by 12. Uh, we can find the cot 5 by, by 12 by reciprocating the value obtained in the previous step. As uh, uh, tan pi by 12 is actually root 3 plus 1 divided by uh, root, sorry, root 3 plus 1 divided by root 3 minus 1. So therefore, if we re reciprocate it, it will be root 3 minus 1 divided by root 3 plus 1. Observe that in the problem, right, the options are given in a rationalized form. So that's why we multiply the denominator and numerator by the conjugate. Therefore, we multiply both denominator and numerator by root 3 minus 1. Hence, the final value will be root 3 minus 1 whole square divided by 3 minus 1, right? Root 3 minus 1 whole square, if we are expanded with the formula of a minus b whole square, and if we, after doing a simple calculation, it becomes 2 minus root 3. Now, we substitute this particular value in the expression we obtain in, in P, right? So, therefore, if we substitute that, right, we get the final value as 2 into root 3 minus 1. 2 root 3 minus 1, okay? That's it. So, in this particular problem, we understand that, right, that the correct option is option C. And that's it. So, it's a very simple problem with the help of a simple trick. So what is the tricks in the denominator and numerator for this particular problem? We just multiplied it right by sine pi by 6, right? So if we do so, right, multiply that sine pi by 6 and here also denominator of sine pi by 6, then the problem is solved. Hope you understood the problem. Thank you.